All right, Jacob, my man, finally. We get to talk Memphis baseball. I'm, I'm excited, man. We talk a lot of baseball. We've actually been talking a lot of gymnastics lately, but, I mean, e anytime we get a college athlete on, it's fun, but it's more more fun when we have Memphis Tigers on. So appreciate That's you right. being on. I want to jump into some, you know, some, let's get weird, you know, let's let's talk crazy. Let's let's Why not? Right off the rip. Obviously, there's big news breaking today. Nick Saban decides he doesn't, want the fat paycheck anymore so he's gonna give it up he's gonna retire from alabama in your eyes is he the greatest coach of all time yeah i mean i would have to say he is i mean with the with the background that that he has and the championships he's won and the and just the the program history with him being there uh my vote would be on him to be the greatest college coach in history no so, doubt Greatest college coach. All right. Is he the greatest coach ever? Hmm. All sports. Think about, you know, obviously, like, it's hard to – it It goes back to that LeBron-Michael debate. Like, you, they didn't play at the same time. So, like, comparing him to Wooden and guys like this that are coached in different eras, it's really hard. But in your eyes, when yeah. you put everything together, is he the greatest coach across all sports ever? I don't know. I think he gives them a, uh, all, all coaches a run for their money. You know, I mean, I think uh, uh, Bill Belichick's a, a heck of a heck of a coach, you know, the, the years with Brady. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. Saban, Saban's put together quality year after quality year. You know, when you look at it from that perspective, I mean, I know he's given every coach a run for their money in terms of one of the greatest coaches in history. So Yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I think one thing that rubs people, or not not really rubs people, but I think what sticks with people, when you talk about lumping him in, I do think he's the greatest coach of all time. Um, I do because but, he's won everywhere. Most people forget his success, not just at LSU, but Michigan State before that. I mean, it's not just a Bama thing. I think what sticks with people is his time in the NFL. They're like, because they tear it like, oh, well, you're such a good college coach and it didn't translate to the NFL. But like, I don't really think he gave it a whole lot of time. But also, like, you get that college money thrown at your face. Like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Take all that. I'm going to go down here and, and, and win a lot. Daniel, have you read Drew Brees' book? I have not. <laughs> He goes into detail, and let me tell you a reason why I like Saban even more. The Saints don't have a Super Bowl or a Hall of Fame quarterback if it ain't for Saban because Saban is who didn't want Drew Brees mm, so. with the Miami team. That's why they took Culpepper. So, shout out to Saban because the Saints never have Drew Brees if he takes him to Miami. I mean, it could have been a different story for old Drew. Saints, we'd have still been brown bagging it. I mean, yeah, it, it... Yeah, forget Drew. I mean, you would have been in bad shape, man. You, I'm, I mean, I would be in therapy for the rest of my life for sure. I mean, you wouldn't have as much hatred for the referees, I bet. <laughs> I just had to blame it on my players. That'd be a shame. Right. <laughs> my players just need to do better. All right, Jacob, obviously being in Memphis, there's a lot of, lot of talk and a lot of news about the Grizzlies and in particular John Morant. Obviously, yeah. Josh now out for the season. Looking at the Grizzlies and what they have going on currently, do you think they have a chance to make the playoffs? And by playoffs, I mean if they could sneak into a 10 spot and, and, and get in, that's the playoffs. So do they have a shot? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think – Um, that they can that they can get to that. Um, obviously, they started off cold, and then we saw a little spark when Ja first came back, and then now it's kind of like another blow, like you said, um, with Ja having his injury. But I think they they still have leaders on the court with Desmond Bain and um, Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, so I mean, I've been to some games myself, and I see. when they figure out ways to score that they're putting things together. And I think if they can get on that role of uh, just keep putting those things together and figuring it out, that they have a chance. Um, 
Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think so. I mean, I think the biggest issue is do people want them to do that? Right. They want them to slowly slide and, and possibly try to get a lottery pick and maybe get lucky and get a one or a two or a three. And, um, you know, me, I'm, I'm pro winning. Like, I'm not about like tanking. I'm about you get paid a lot of money to go out there and play and, and, and entertain fans and fans are going to pay, you know, I mean, let's face it, those tickets aren't cheap. And, you know, if you pay for your family or something, there's a lot of Christmas presents that were probably bought for Grizzlies games over the next couple of months. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when you look at it like that, I, I want the, the team to go out and do the best that they can do. Do they have an outside shot at being in the playoffs? Absolutely they do. Um, but the reality is, is there's a lot of different things that have to happen and they've played great the past three games on this road trip. Um, you know, we'll see what happens when they come back home for a couple. Jim will be there on Friday when they take on the Clippers. So it'll, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see, but you know, outside of that, man, you've been spotted at the DAC, the Soto Athletic Center. All right. What is your favorite workout? Are you a back and buys guy, a chest and tries guy? Are you a legs guy? I mean, inquiring minds want to know. They want to know when they can come in and 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 and, and check it out. They want to yeah. see. Yeah, um, I would say I I used to be an all time legs guy, man. And legs was my favorite, but as I as I've gotten a little older in my college career, um, man, I just I love hitting chest. Chest is probably my favorite one. Chest and tries. Um, but so chest, chest would be my number one and then arms would be my number two, just getting a good, good pump in the upper body. I love it. We, we know how the Soto central athletes are, are, are trained growing up, (laughs) so to speak. Now, are you a guy who works out with his shoes on or off? I mean, th- just so you know, <laughs> this interview could end right right after this question. It could. Yeah, I think uh, I remember the history on this. Um, I there it is, ladies and gentlemen. But I am a shoes on guy. I think he said. I think he said shoes off. That's why he cut out. I think our own connection dropped, Daniel, because it couldn't take hearing him say shoes off. I said I there's times where I do take my shoes off, but I am a shoes on guy. No reason ever, unless you're getting in that pool, to take them shoes off. <laughs> hey, All right. I mean, yeah, I mean, you got to be connected to the ground. That's what that's what they say. That's what and they I, say. Look, and I, I trust me, I understand all that, but you're not going to convince me that high school kids are mechanically sound to lift and understand the philosophy behind lifting with no shoes on. I thought you said it best, Daniel, back then you play the sport with your shoes on, you lift with your shoes on. Yeah. I mean, simple as that. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. I'm not, I'm not going to get off on this because maybe we can get ELB oh, we to fire it up again. Yeah. I mean, we'll, <laughs> get hot things will get heavy <laughs> that's all right um, hey we're we're team uh we're team base sports performance so we they got our back right. yep Uh-oh. yep so last question before jim gets into your story favorite athlete of all time hmm. i don't know i i got mine's cameron james uh, too i get it i get it i'm gonna have to say Alex Rodriguez. I like Alex Rodriguez. I think my favorite all time. You know what? We've had a couple guests say that, and it's like, like as a baseball guy, I understand that. But some fans will listen and they'll go, "Man, they they just like pigeonhole that guy into just being bad news." Mm-hmm. So they're like, "How is that?" But they fail to realize how good of a player this guy really I'm, is. I'm glad. I'm glad the couple negatives don't stop these guys from knowing how great he was and respecting his game. The end of the day, we talk about all the time, these guys who got caught taking juice, they were all phenomenal regardless. It just gave them an extra edge. 
Yeah. Now if everybody favorite. could just if everybody could just do hey Jacob go do juice right now and hit 50 bombs, right? If it was that easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, d- doing doing steroids is is great, man. It makes you feel good probably, but like it's not going to you still have to decide to swing the bat. <laughs> you still got to hit you still got to hit the slider away, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's a difficult difficult thing to do. So let's let's get into your story, Jay. Man, you know, for those who don't know, where are you from? Well, I grew up in uh, Independence, Mississippi, and then I moved up to DeSoto Central, which is South Haven area, South Haven, Mississippi. So, so, area. Let, so let me paint the year. picture for those that don't know, Jacob, Daniel. Just when you picture the middle of nowhere, you know, cows. Like, just nothing. That's independence. As a matter of fact, I used to coach baseball out at the fields out in independence, and I had to drive like 30 minutes, Daniel, in the middle of nowhere. No phone reception to go coach these baseball games. So when he says he's from independence, understand he's saying he's from the boondocks. Independence. That's the only thing they got there is (laughs) independence. Only only thing. You better fill up your gas tank before you head out. You know what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> but you know, so you're from there. Let's talk about you know your family. Uh, you know, first, you know, obviously you being a baseball guy, the first thing that stands off the page is your dad, man. He was a college baseball player. So talk to me about the family as a whole, but also you know talk about your dad, him being a player, and you know how that he was able to pass on his knowledge and kind of mm-hmm. teach you growing up. Yeah, I mean, my dad, man, he was a big influence in in who I am today. In terms of me being the player I am, the man I am today. Um, coaching me up, you know, and just showing me the fundamentals of the game, fielding the ground balls the right way, um, you know, getting getting into my legs, how to use my legs in my swing, teaching me how to hit with power. That, that was what my dad was. Um, and so, man, he had a big influence in to my foundation of my swing and the hitter I am today. That's what's up. So that's Pops. You know, talk to me about the rest of the family. You know, um, you have any siblings? You know, what you got going on? So my, so my oldest sister, she's a car salesman. And then I got another older sister. She's an RN. And then I got my youngest sister. She's a, a pilot, and she's training to become a FedEx pilot. She has a private pilot, and she's actually a flight instructor right now. So that's pretty cool. And then I have that I love so much. So your sister, you know, your your sister's going to be a pilot. You know, first of all, shout out to her. You know, usually when you hear pilot, it's always I uh, hear about – men that are pilots so that that's legit and now you know who you're going to be borrowing money from if you need it because pilots make good money yeah. so <laughs> i hope your relationship with her is good if you need it oh it is it is man if, if i ever needed something she would definitely help me out so i'm thankful she's where she's at so one of the things man when you look up your si page it doesn't say what travel ball you uh organization you play for which is cool man so i get to learn i didn't even i didn't even try to research it because i know i could find it obviously watched you in high school know where that was but you know what travel ball team did you come up playing for yeah so at a how many i played for a few when i was real young i played for this team they were called the olive branch timberwolves then i played probably 13 14 i played for a team named sba cubs a guy named brandon singh um he's another huge influential guy and everything I know from the game he had his own organization and I played for him and then I played for uh Doolin Dodgers and then I played for at the end I played for Easley Baseball Club so I was kind of bounced around a little bit and was all over but those were who I played for yeah now in in the end you ended up with the right one because you know Ed Easley's a is the guest of this show we support EBC so uh you know, solidifies you ended up in the right spot. Uh, you know, as far as high school, like I said, we know, but for those who don't know, where did you go to high school at? So I went to the Soto Central, and it was an awesome time of my life. 
I, I bet it was because I mean, you know, I watched you guys in 2018, and I mean, to top to bottom that lineup, you know, um, you know, uh, I mean, I didn't go to games that were close, Daniel. Uh, these games got out of hand real quick. We're talking about they need to throw the towel type games. I don't know what they're doing. You you got pitch or you got coaches throwing out pitchers just hoping they can get through the rest of the game and. You got Jacob and Blaze and Cam and all these dudes just hitting them five hundred foot bombs, feeling bad for these kids. And DC was man a powerhouse to say the least. Which leads us to a question that we've asked every guest that's come on here, whether they were from the 2015 team or the 2018 team. If you lined them up in your prime, 2015 versus 18, who's winning, Jacob? Well, you know, I got to go with my guys. I got to say 2018. So, Austin Riley, Keegan James, Dallas Wolf folks on that bump, throwing to you, and you're going to light them up. Bring it on. Bring it on. I got to ride with my guys in our lineup that we had. I got to. I can't turn my back on them and say 2015 is going to win. Absolutely. What's What's great is Daniel knows, you know, Austin came on here and said he didn't like to pitch then and he wouldn't pitch after that. So you ha you avoid Austin pitching because he said he don't like his arm hurting. So the good news is you get to Dallas or Keegan. The bad news is they're still good, but you do get you do get to avoid Austin on that mound, which is interesting that he was so good but but hated pitching. Um Yeah. And and when I watched y'all, what I thought was wild, and we we talked a lot about it a lot in real time. I tell I told people at Mississippi State all the time that Cam was such a phenomenal pitcher, and they didn't even know he could pitch because when he got to Mississippi State, you know, he was doing nothing but shortstop and third base. And uh, I was like, man, I, I watched him. So y'all had guys that weren't even, you know, didn't even play pitcher in college that were dealing on the mound. But y'all's lineup top to bottom was nasty. But talk about Coach Monaghan. You know, I actually bought my house from him. This house I'm in right now is uh, is your coach's house. Um he uh he obviously recently made the move left DC, but talk about what it was like to play for him. Um, and you know, DeSoto Central, like you said, you know, best time of your life, man. Talk about just being on that team and playing for him. Yeah, I mean, everybody everybody loves and respects Coach Monaghan. You know, from day one, uh, we walked in, you know, there was a standard that was set in that program. Um, and he always had, you know, this slogan or or words like that we would wear on our shirts, um, and that's what that's what we live by. You know, I can't remember exactly what our slogan was my my senior year, um, but man, he he, there was a standard at DeSoto Central, and that's what that's what we lived up to. You know, we were the hardest workers. I would go to say out of anybody in the state, the way that we worked and trained, um, and you know, in order for that standard to be set, it's got to be set by the coach. And Coach Monaghan set a standard there, and that's why there's so many, so many wins from that program, you know. Um, so I love Coach Monaghan. I respect the way that he coached and carried himself. Um, and I mean, he he was a he's a great guy. So I really respect him. Yeah, no doubt. And all these players know, like I said, 2015 all the way through 2020. They've all said the same thing. So shout out to him for leaving, you know, that legacy at DeSoto Central. But, you know, ultimately you you talk about playing for EBC. You talk about playing for DeSoto Central. Very successful. Um, like I said, I watched you do your thing. So ultimately we know you start getting recruited for colleges. You know, why is it that you ultimately picked Northeast Mississippi? What was it about there, you know, um, especially because when you look at the Mississippi JUCO schools, right, like, um, you know, your boys went to a lot of the other ones. Like, they, there's all the options. So I'm curious because all y'all kind of spread out to different ones, right? Like Hines, Jones, uh, uh, where did uh, Wesley Size go? What's that one? Uh, East. Yeah, East. And then obviously Northwest. Like, it's like, I mean, the the Mississippi Juco circuit's wild. So I'm interested to know why you pick Northeast. Well, I got to stop you right there for a second just because. Actually, I went to Kahoma Community College my freshman year. And you may not have knew that because it's kind of hidden. <laughs> yeah, as I say, but... that, that ain't in the SI department. And when I was at Northwest <laughs> and you hit that bomb, um, you definitely were playing for – or I said Northwest – yeah, against Northwest. You were definitely playing for uh, them, so. North, yeah. So I went to Kahoma Community College my, my freshman year out of high school, man. And uh, 
So I'll just start there, I guess, and then lead into Northeast. Man, Cahoma was my only offer out of high school. Um, and, you know, in high school, I had, uh, I, had the, I had the talent, but I didn't have it all the way figured out. Like, I had the power, but I couldn't put everything together. And then it was when I got to Cahoma, you know, playing every day that I really put it together, um, or at least put some pieces together. And I just knew that that wasn't the place for me to grow um, and to get to where I, I needed to truly be. And that's what I felt. And so um, I reached out to some other schools and uh, Northeast, they they offered me a spot um, and a scholarship. And I was like, man, they were they were building a brand new field. Um, and I love Coach Harrelson down there. And I was like, man, this is the place for me. You know, I went down there on a visit uh, after my freshman year at Cahoma, and I just knew it was the, the place right. It was the right place for me. So, so. In, we, we talk about a lot on here, the Mississippi JUCO schools, and obviously there's a lot of D1 prospects that come out of those schools. Um, you know, whether it was at Cahoma or Northeast, when you started on day one, was it was your thought process? I've got to get to the D one level, or was it just take one day at a time and then whatever happens happens? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's always been a dream of mine is to play at the D one level. So I mean, I think that I had that in the back of my head, but then you have to like the coaches that I played for, you know, especially. Uh, Coach Harrelson at Northeast, a, a process-oriented guy, um, you know, just trusting the process, getting your work done each day. So, I mean, I had that in the back of my head as this is the goal that I want, but I have to work for it each and every day and focus on the day that's at hand. So, well, that Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, it you got a goal, but you know what you got to do every day to get to that goal, but – in your two years at Northeast, you appeared in 55 games. You were the team captain, and you hit 298 with 11 home runs, 11 doubles, and 55 RBIs. How did you feel about your production in those two seasons? Um, you know, given like, all right, telling me, you know, you were worried about each day at a time. You knew what the overall goal was, but after you have two seasons like that, what was, you know, what did what do you felt feel as though your production was? Was it good enough? Was it what you thought? Was it, um, you know, tell me. Yeah, I mean, looking looking back on it, uh, and I guess uh, during that time, you know, I thought I thought I I hit pretty good and pretty well. I mean, it's always a goal of mine, you know, to hit it upwards of upwards of three hundred. Um, you know, so I was right below that, and um. I think I hit eight bombs my second year there, which uh, my goal was 10, so I was too short of that. Um, but, I mean, I, I think I had a solid year, and, I mean, I, I just – it got me to the – I was successful. So, you know, obviously with, with two successful seasons, um, you had to have taken away a lot from it. What was the one thing that you felt like you learned that was the most beneficial to you preparing to go, you know, to another school? Yeah, I would say what I learned the most uh, from my time there was just like the mental, mental aspects of the game. Uh, just to, to compete every pitch, you know, not to take a pitch off, um, to be locked in, like watching other guys' ABs in the dugout um, and not letting a, a previous at-bat or anything affect me for my, for my next at-bat or going to play defense. I think that that's what I, what I really picked up on was the mental side of the game there um, because I feel like I had, the, I had the talent and the power, but uh, it was just kind of putting together the mental, mental side of even when I'm struggling – just to keep doing what I'm doing and just trust my approach, trust my plan and that I'm going to be back to where I need to be. So that's what I learned from there. You, you know what I learned? 
I just looked out my window. I saw something flying by, and I was like, man, that must be that baseball that Jim watched you hit that one day that's still flying through the air. <laughs> I, heard, I heard you you hit some moonshots, some bombs while you were there. I'll tell you what, man. I uh, I think uh, Northwest, I, I hit a bomb every time we played them. It was just something about them. It's a I launch pad. It ain't just it ain't just you. I watched Wesley Sides take one deep there. I watched I watched a lot of DC guys coming to Northwest and power them out. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I don't know what it is about that, but uh, you know, it's just something a little different, something a little extra. So Jacob, man, you you go to JUCO, you have two seasons of really successful JUCO, you know, you have a decision to make. Obviously, um the choices, you know, given the success that you had, you probably have multiple choices. So talk to me about what the choices were and where you ended up going first, because you are a world traveler, man. And then this college college game, man. So where was it first? Yeah. So, I mean, I had, uh, I had a few options on the table after Northeast. Um, I had, I had a, quite a few D2 offers. Um, then I had a few D ones like UAB, um, was one that I was really considering. And then Memphis kind of came onto the scene late. Like, I'd always wanted to go to Memphis, you know, and, like, my junior college coach always told Memphis if they were to offer me that I would commit on the spot, you know. And uh, so kind of later, my second year at Northeast, uh, Memphis came in and offered me, and I was like, oh, my gosh, man, this is like – this is everything I dreamed of right here. And so I committed to Memphis and, you know, I, I just thought it would be a good fit for me being there. And I love coach, coach rock. For me to go to Memphis. So you go to Memphis, you, you basically that's, that was the dream. I mean, being a guy in playing with the Soto Central and then going to JUCO relatively in the Mid South region, you have the opportunity to go to Memphis. You take it. So, with Coach Show and Rock or under Coach Show and Rock's guidance, that first year at Memphis, what happens? What what kind of season did you have? Did you meet your expectations? I mean, he he hit the most RBIs in the AAC. <laughs> maybe maybe his goal was to be the you know like that may not have been the goal. I well, mean, he said his goal at JUCO was to hit three hundred, and so he hit two ninety one. So I'm sure he's very disappointed about the the point nine zero nine. Yeah, um, I, I mean I I didn't know really what to expect going in. I knew it was going to be a jump in talent. And once I got there, I had a I had a good fall, and so I was like I was like, man, I think I can, you know, went through exit meetings and all that, and I was like, man, I think I can be a guy for this team. Um, and then once once the season started, you know, I I was like, okay, like this is I I can I can really be a guy, and you know, so my expectations first going in, I was I was thinking like. I don't know what to expect, you know. And then once I got there and I went through that first – my first fall, I was like, okay, I can hit in this league. And so, I mean, I expected to be a, a big-time player for us and um, had a little ups and downs in the year, but I had more hot streaks than I did cold streaks. And then at the end of the year, you know, led the conference uh, in RBIs and doubles um, with 11 bombs. So, I would consider that a, a quality year for myself that I had. Yeah, for sure. And so what's crazy now, you know, given the fact that you are this college baseball world traveler, you have a lot of experience, you know, when you look at your, when you look today back at your entire career, you've been to a lot of places. So at the end of the season, what happens and why is there this, this, this move? Yeah. So, I mean, I love Memphis. Like I said, you know, back in Memphis. Um, I loved Memphis and I loved my coaching staff. And when we figured out right before the season that 
Coach Rock was was going to retire, or whatever was uh, going on there, right? Um, and the whole coaching, the rest of the coaching staff was leaving. I was like, dang, like this, like I, I love Coach Rock, man. He was a man of God, um, but just didn't have the amount of wins that that people wanted uh, from Memphis. But as like a as a coach, all the players loved him, and I loved him myself. And so when we found out that uh, he was leaving and the rest of the coaching staff was leaving, um, I knew at the end of the year that if I was to enter the portal, that I would get more options. Um, and so that was kind of my thinking. I was like, I'm going to see the new coach of kind of where, where that, where that is. And then I'm just going to weigh my options. And if I like the new coach, then, then I'm going to stay here and play here. And so that's where I was at at the end of the year. I was like, I'm just going to see where I'm at and see what's out there where I'm going to stay home. So at that point, Coach Jackson comes in, right? Yep. So now what? So now is is his philosophy matching what yours is, or is there some type of like, I still want to see what's out there? Yeah, I mean, he comes in and uh, he talks to us on the first day. And, I mean, I, I respected everything that he had to say. Um, you know, I mean, I thought that I could definitely play for him. But, uh, you know, with Coach Rock and them leaving, I was just like, man, you know, I want to go play at a program that's that's going to go to Omaha. Having two years left in my career, I mean, that's really what I wanted. I was like, you know, I've dreamed about the, playing at the D1 level. I'm here. And now I dream about playing in Omaha. Um, and I wanted to play at a school that, that could get there. And, you know, I, I didn't know that if the, the first year of a new head coach coming in and some of our best guys transferring out, if we were going to be that team. So, okay, you have these, these questions in your mind. So what happens then? Where do you go? Well, talk with coach Jackson and I, I tell him that, that I'm going to enter the portal. Um, and I do. And man, like first day in there, I'm talking like 30, 30 some schools are just like calling off the wall, you know? And it's like, I've never really been recruited like this in my life. So it's pretty, it's pretty like shocking to me, you know, having one offer out of high school, uh, to Oklahoma going to play there to now like my phone's literally blowing off the hook. I'm like, oh my gosh, like all these schools actually want me. So now I'm at the point where I'm entertaining all the offers that they're giving me, seeing what their programs are about, um, and really just trying to see what the best fit is for me. You know, that's that's where I was, I was trying to figure out um, what's the best fit for me. So what, what was the best fit for you? Well, obviously I end up at South Carolina, but the road there, um, I was up in, I was playing summer ball in, in Springfield, Illinois and the prospect league. And, uh, man, I, I'm a, I'm a big man of my faith. And, um, so I'm always, you know, going to pray about it. And I was praying about it and I was, I narrowed it down. I was either going to go to South Alabama, NC state or Houston. Um, and all three of those schools, man, they gave me really good offers and they wanted me really bad. And, and I was like, those are my three. And I was praying through that. And one morning, I literally said, I said, God, open the doors that you want to open and close the doors that you want to close. And literally 30 minutes later, South Carolina called. And it was uh, Coach Chad Kaye. And he said, uh, he was like, hey, Jacob, we're, we're going to offer you right now. And he offered me. And the next day, I was. I talked to Coach Kingston actually later on that day, and this is why I chose South Carolina because, like I said, I'm a man of my faith. And um, Coach Kingston at South Carolina was the only man that I talked to, the only coach I talked to, who talked uh, to me about having a relationship with 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 God. And when we were talking about that, I was like, man, like I feel like this is the place for me. And then when you know we're talking South Carolina, um, how they want. They've won, you know, back-to-back -back national championships. Um, so they have that tradition of Omaha. Um, and with everything that they had going, I was like, man, I, 
I really think this would be a good fit for me. And so that's why I chose South Carolina. So, I mean, we, we can see the, the shirt that you're wearing now. So obviously South Carolina doesn't stick. What happens? What, what's the story behind South Carolina? Talk as, as, as little or as much as you want to about that, that time there. And then how do we get back to Memphis? Yeah. Um, so I go out to South Carolina and, you know, play, play throughout the fall. I'd say I had a, a decent, uh, a decent fall. Um, and man, I was loving it out there. I loved loving all the guys, making friends, getting plugged in, uh, in a good community and everything up there. And then spring times come, spring times comes, we're like, like just getting into scrimmages and I probably like two weeks before the season, boom, I got a, I get a stress reaction in my lower spine. Um, and man, that, like, I was like, my trainer was like, all right, it's going to be a six to eight week recovery from that. So all the guys, they start out playing and I'm trying to, you know, be, just be the best teammate that I can be during this time and recover. And man, I get to that probably five to six week mark. And I'm like itching at the bit. We're about to go play Clemson, you know, South Carolina's biggest rival. I'm just like itching at the bit. I'm like, man, like I need to, I need to get healthy so I can play, like at least get an A B versus Clemson. You know, we go to Clemson on Friday night and they're I mean, they're like, I don't know, it's just like something different about it up there. And um, like we're in the cages hitting before and I've been coming back and I'm taking BP in the cages and I just I feel another like crack in my back and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this isn't good. So then I was out for another like another six weeks and then it got to the halfway point of of where you know either I could med red or or I could try to finish it out and play and I figured out like um that I didn't have no more eligibility so last year was supposed to be my last year because I thought I had two more years because they were with uh junior college they said that the 21 year was you were supposed to give it back even if you played it that's what the njca ruled but the nca back was still hurting really bad and so i just got to the point where me and coach kingston decided that it was best for me to redshirt um med red and and come back the next year. Um, and then season goes on. <clears throat> we go, you know, the regional and then the super regional at Florida. Um, I go, you know, staying up there over the summer, working out and stuff, getting back strong. And I actually go on a mission trip to, to Ethiopia over the summer. And then I come home, getting myself ready to go back and, um, you know, I was I was on a good scholarship, a good scholarship there last year, and you know I called Coach Kingston and had a talks with him, and you know what? Since since I didn't prove to be the player, I guess that that he recruited or I didn't show like my talent level because you know I wasn't able to play the whole year. Um, and nothing against Coach Kingston, man, I love him. I think he's a great coach. <coughs> But there was just no money. They didn't have any money um, for me there. And I knew that I'll, if I went back up there, I'd have to go like 35K in debt. And I just knew that I was like, man, there's got to be something else. If I'm going to play one more year, um, I was like, I, I don't think it's worth it to go 35K in debt. And so that's that's when I, I was like, you know, I asked Coach Kingston, I was like, hey, if I get into the portal – and and I weigh out some other options, you know, would I still have a spot on the team? And he was like, absolutely. And so, I mean, that was very respectable on his part. And also he told me, you know, all the guys, he was straight up honest with me. He said, look, comp, me and him had a great relationship. He said, look, comp, this is all the guys we're bringing in. You know, we got Costas coming back. And, you know, I play first base. So 
we had Casas coming back. Um, then they were bringing in other guys from the portal. Well, 40, well I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you this, Jacob. Um, AJ <laughs> Sessions, who does our In Off the Benches Hot Corner, um, he's the one that actually drafted you in our Survivor game. Um, huge South Carolina guy. He said, and th this was breaking news to me, he said, uh, and this is crazy when we think about it, Daniel, think about Ethan Petrie. He said him and Compton were – in a battle for a position. And at the time, um, there was a time where Jacob was the guy before Ethan was. Um, and according to, and that's from interviews with Kingston, he said, man, I'm, yeah. gl I'm glad you're in tiger blue, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's so wild. I mean, you look at the year Ethan had, man, you were projected in front of him. Well, I'll tell you this, man, Ethan Petrie, he's a dog and I love him. But man, to be honest, and he'll I mean he would straight up tell you this, man, he he could not pull a baseball in the fall. I mean, it was like a light switch flip. He added that toe tap in his swing, man, it was a light switch flip. And, you know, that happens for some guys. And and that man, Petri is a beast of a player. But in the fall, man, he, he struggled. And I mean, he had some good moments and you know, he had the power, like when we would be taking BP, I'm talking about hitting moon shots. Um, backside moon shots, but in game, man, he had trouble. He had some trouble in the fall, but and then in the spring, he got a couple pinch hit abs, and man, it was he was in there every game, you know, hitting bombs off of Paul Skeen. So, <laughs> hey, yeah, no, hey, Daniel, this is it's gonna be wild. This could be where he comes back. He ends up winning the Survivor game, takes out my captain, Ethan Vetri. That'll be wild times. Man, wow, wow, so. Now you you are in the portal, and you know you got one year left. Um, you know that Memphis at this point, I guess, or maybe you don't, but Coach Jackson now has left Memphis, and that was one of the the reasons why you decided you wanted to pursue other things because a new coach, you know, new coach, new system, new players, like it was just a little bit much, and so you. You wanted to test the waters. You left, and now he's gone. And now you're the new guy coming back to what's going to be now a new program and an, under a new coach. You know, they they got a, a brand new field. They have, you know, a lot of transfers. So why why did you decide to go back to Memphis? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, I think that there's there's good fit. For, for players and, and a good fit for me <clears throat> was coming back to Memphis. Um, you know, just from my knowledge, like I knew that that Memphis, um, like I had heard that that if, if I was to get in the portal, that they would probably offer me. And I did, and immediately they reached out to me and put me an offer on the table. And it was an offer, you know, that I couldn't resist. And I was like, man, like, I love Memphis, um, you know, live right on the suburb of Memphis. I've, I've done played here. I know the ins and outs of, like, our facility and not the new field, obviously, but just, like, and then coming back with some of the older guys who have been there, man, I reached out to, to some former teammates, and they were like, dude, we would love to have you back. And I just – I knew that it was the right fit for me to come back and play my last year and be closer to home, you know, from being eight hours away to home to now being right – right at home i knew that this was the right fit for me according to jim you know and uh, he he saw this with his own eyes you are i sent you the video bro <laughs> yeah but you know how it is on video like it doesn't match when you see it in person but he's watching this in person and like you you hit an absolute missile this fall against old miss and Seems like you're 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 at home. You're feeling real comfortable, man. So, um, I guess, what is it? You know, tell the listeners that are you know we we have a big mid Memphis following. Like, they want to know what is there to be excited about. Give us some players that you think, in your eyes, you're like outside of me, Jacob Compton. Here's some guys that you got to watch out for. They're going to be big time contributors this year. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, man, uh, I think, and actually, I know my guys. 
Austin Baskin. Um, be watching out for him. He had a heck of a year last year, um, and he can bang it. Um, he's a guy that, that I like to get in the cages and hit with and, and get my work in with because that's how much we challenge each other. He can bang it. And then Jake Curtis, another guy, um, a leader uh, on the field and in the locker room. Um, some dude, dude, dudes on the mound, you know, David Warren. I was facing him this fall, you know, from coming from South Carolina to, to being at Memphis. <clears throat> David Warren's got stuff. Um, and if he keeps throwing the way he's been, he'll be our every night, every Friday night guy. <clears throat> and then we got some new new guys in. Um, a guy named Pierre Seals uh, can swing it. He's a guy who hit the what was it the 580 80 foot 582 foot or something like that bomb. Mm-hmm. No 482 482. I'm sorry, not 582. Oh, say. <laughs> no, he hit one off the scoreboard though. The base of the scoreboard at Ole Miss. I mean, I'm talking about cranked it, and he's got juice like that. Got a guy named Dante Stewart coming in. Um, I think he launched one at Ole Miss as well. Dante did it. Yeah, the second game. Yeah, y'all hit a lot. Y'all hit a lot. Y'all hit a lot out. Low key, like gave Memphis all they or gave Ole Miss all they wanted. Yeah, I mean, we got some bats, and then there's another guy playing first base. His name's Pierce Livingood. He came from Southeastern, where Coach Riser came from, and, and he's a he's going to be a big bat for us as well. And we got dudes all around, man. There's plenty of guys that I didn't name for all, like, the listeners out there. Um, I mean, I think this team can really swing it. I think that if we all buy in to – to what Coach Riser is is implemented, um, that we're going to be successful. I mean, I truly believe that, and we got dudes on the mound too. So, yeah, one of one of them's a, a guest of ours. We had a mom at Ole Miss, but Luke Ellis, Luke Ellis, Braden Sanders. Well, yeah, we've That's had both. We had guy. we had Braden on when he was in high school. With uh, he did a dual episode with Brady Tiger. Yeah, I mean that little. He may be short. Oh, Braden Sanders, but he's a little fireball on that mound. He gets up there and throws that thing, and he, he lets them know. He ain't scared, man. He, he going to get up there and, and get his. Well, the big question is, is the American Athletic Conference baseball tournament at the end of the mm-hmm. season is always in Clearwater, Florida. Do you know that it? you could be the guy that gets me to come out there? <laughs> No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. You know, what What I do need to do is I need to commit to going over to South Florida because I'm in Tampa. You guys travel to South Florida. I need to I need to go there and watch you guys play, no doubt. Yeah. I need to, you need to come on. Jump away. Um, but, you know, I'm excited because there, there's a little buzz now. Like, you know – I think that's the one thing that's missing. I mean, you said it yourself when you were there with Coach Show and Rock, there was, you know, culture within the team, right? But outside of the team, like, there was not a lot of buzz. Now you got new facilities and and things are humming. You got new coach. You had, you know, you know, a good season under Coach Jackson. Now you got Coach Reiser coming in and and everyone's talking about you and, and some other transfers and just the core of the team. And there is a lot of buzz, man. So I'm excited to, you know, stay up to date, check you guys out. I mean, I'm even willing to come watch you guys, man, because I, I think this is going to be a little bit different of a season. We're talking about trying to get, get you guys back into a regional, trying to get you guys – a I mean, chance. you see, I shifted my right. schedule. Um, I got, I made it to where I'll be in Memphis for when ECU comes to down. Because you know, Daniel, well, no different than I was talking about Memphis basketball. You know, I made a Memphis basketball post, and Tennessee fans had to come jump all over me. I made a Memphis baseball post. He saw it. Jacob saw it. All of a sudden, here comes the ECU fans making fun of me. I ain't say nothing about ECU. I just said that <laughs> don't sleep on Memphis in the AAC, and here they came. And so now I'm going to be there. I would already be rooting for Memphis, but I'm angrily rooting just for ECU to get whooped because they dismissed Memphis just because I just try to give them a nice post. You know what I mean? I mean, it's because that's the only thing they can hang their hat on. They're a team that is, that is 
I'm not going to say underachieve, but their window of capitalizing is is slowly getting to the point where people aren't believing that they that they are. Boy, as and that, could you imagine what's going to happen if Memphis take you know w- let's take it one day at a time? But if they were to take the AAC from them, boy, 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 that seat would get hot over there. Wow, <laughs> and you your seat would get hot too because you would you would just make sure everybody on Twitter and on the socials knew. Oh yeah. Just like I just, as soon as Memphis won this basketball game, I just made sure that Tennessee Twitter is going to, or Vol Twitter is going to come at me all night and I don't care. Bring it. I live for this. (laughs) But anyway, speaking of living for something, we've got to do a game called this or that. We play it with every single guest, Jacob. So you're not getting away from this. It's very simple. We give you two options. You choose one or the other. You can't say neither. You can't say both. Are you down to play? I'm down to play. Let's do it. All right. Well, before we do that, we have to plug our sponsor. And this or that is brought to you by Chinook Cedary. And Daniel has been doing something that is sweeping across the nation. He has came up with a couple different combos so far. Jacob is an ambassador of Chinook Cedary, Daniel, if you did not know. So Let's go, Jacob. His, his code yeah. for those who want to know, if you want to get the best seeds ever, you type in m 3 M-P-H-I-S. Very simple if you're a Memphis person. Anyway, get your seeds from Jacob. Help him through NIL. But like I said, they're the best seeds. But Daniel, with the eight flavors from Mild to Wild, has been mixing. We just had the Wario the other night. What do we got on deck tonight, Daniel? Oh, tonight is is a just, you know, this was an easy one. This was just a layup for me. It just hit me right in the face when I was looking at what my options were. So you have a little combo of Dill pickle and hatch chili. And now I got to know the type because these titles you're coming with. I mean, Wario, Smoke and Toast, like they They all have a purpose. They all have a purpose (laughs) and they all mean something. So tonight it's, it's, it's no surprise tonight. You get dill pickle, you get hatch chili. You combine them. Guess what you get? What we got? Chill pickle. Oh, chill pickle. Come on, you know that's good, <laughs> right? Guess. That's good. The problem is you're still fixing to have dill pickle, and that's mine and yours least favorite flavor. So we'll see where this goes. So you know the good thing. The good thing about mixing these is that sometimes you take something that you don't like, for instance, like a Brussels sprout, <laughs> and you put bacon with it, and immediately it's it's better. Well, it's bacon makes Brussels everything sprout. in life better. Right, so that's my hope here. Is I put some hatch chili with this dill pickle, we get the chill pickle combination, and we'll see. So I'm, let me throw them back. Let's see here. Mm. All right, initial reaction: less dill, which is good. So when I had just dill pickle, it was very dilly. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of it, and I think going in 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 my head, I was kind of a little biased. But I was excited now to mix it with something. And really, the hatch chili, yeah, it has a little bit on on the end at the very end, enough to make you go, "All right, if I mix both of these together, I can have dill pickle, and I can say that I eat dill pickle sunflower seeds." Um, however, the combination as a whole, it's 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 okay. I'm gonna give it uh seven two. Uh seven two. Yeah, it's it's right there. It's it's good, but not great. And something seven, I can do. Uh, seven two is something that you could definitely it's you know, more than tolerable. But the thing is, you know, those aren't your two favorite flavors. So somebody else may try this and it might be an eight two. You know, that's that's Correct. the reality of it. So what I'll say is if you're somebody who likes a little a little spice with your burger, this is for you. Dill pickle, hatch chili, chill pickle, check it out. Get both flavors. As a matter of fact, when you go to the store. No, we're not we're not doing the store. We're ordering them from Jacob, man. Yeah, when you order them from Jacob, <laughs> M3MPHIS is the code. When you order them from Jacob, go ahead and just order every flavor. That way you can follow along with the combinations that I go go with, and maybe you come up with your own. Hit us up on, on the socials, and Jim will be sure to let me know what you feel like we should try. 
it's about time you get on the socials and see what you should try. One day you're going to cave to this, you know, new age society of using social media all the time. All right, let me let me preface my social media game for everybody. You know, if I get on social media, now I'm having to follow social media, but then I'm having to follow up on everything that Jim's doing too, and that's just too much. That's no problem because I actually scrolled your page today out of curiosity. You don't have any tweets of your own. They're just retweets of mine. I don't know that you've actually tweeted your own words. Yeah, I don't have anything to say. If people <laughs> want to know what I have to say, they need to go on over to Spotify, go on over to Anchor, Apple Podcasts, wherever they get their podcasts, wherever they stream their their content, and listen to the show. There we go. Boom. Well, let's get to this game. Speaking of flavors, man, how do you like your potatoes? Would you rather have baked or mashed potatoes? Got to go mashed potatoes all the yeah. way. I'm I'm really surprised. It's been like mashed the whole way. You know, I know I know people who like a good baked potato. I like potatoes in all form. You can give them scalped, it don't matter. This next one's an interesting question. It's caused a lot of conflict. Would you prefer liquid soap or bar soap? Liquid soap. You realize liquid soap doesn't clean you as good as bar soap, though, right? It's it's convenient, but it's not as cleanly. Is that just, is that is that fact, or are you just saying? Yeah. I told my wife today how I've managed to convince every guest up until you just did that to believe that. As a matter of fact, last night, Hannah Stutz is convinced that bars or uh, liquid soap only 50% cleans your body because I lied. And now you just asked me that. I was going to take <laughs> this lie all the way through season nine. Hmm. Why would you do that to me? Now he knows. Let me give you an update. Yeah, I was gonna. I was going to ask you the same question on that. Let me let me give you an update on this this chill pickle. After marinating for a little bit, it's better. So it's better. if I if I'm at the ball game after, you know, a few batters have came to the plate and old Jacob steps to the plate, I'm going to have the perfect marination of flavor right before he hits this jack. Yeah, and I think you you let it simmer and then as you get about halfway through what's you know your mouthful then you reload and you constantly have that that nice little influx of marination going so All right. because of that i'm gonna up it three tenths of a point to a seven five solid solid all right jacob you may not be scared of either but if you are what are you more scared of snakes or spiders oh man I absolutely hate snakes, man. Holy cow. That is a that is the worst fear. I I learned from our Hawaii baseball guest uh yesterday. They don't have snakes in Hawaii, and then I researched it. That in fact is not a lie. There are no snakes in Hawaii, Daniel. So if you didn't know that, Jacob, you didn't know that, now you know. Wow. But I'm I'm actually all right with snakes. It's spiders, man. Don't matter if they're little, big, poisonous not, keep them away from me. All right, when it comes to your uniforms, man, Memphis's baseball kit is fire. Y'all, I mean, you cannot go wrong with blue, black, and white. That being said, you got to choose between the blue, the black, or the white jersey. What is your favorite? I have to go all white. All Ooh, white. He likes the crispy whites. Daniel, how do you feel as a Memphis fan? That's a classic. White is, white is a classic look. It's and, whites, whites, what everybody loves, but the moms that have to clean them when you're in little league. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> All right. What would you rather go to a costume party or a pool party? Mm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go pool party. It's a good old pool party with the. Ha, ha, throw, throwing a football around, man. Can't beat that. Cooking out okay. some burgers on the grill. What what do you think about the Wake Forest baseball players? Because Josh Hartle was the first one that got asked this question, and he said him and the boys dressed up as Teletubbies. How do you feel about this? Or would you and the Memphis guys? I mean, uh, you can throw shade here. Would you would you go as Teletubbies, or is that a little weird for you? <laughs> I mean, if it was a if it was the only costume left in the 
<laughs> left it in the Halloween store. You know, I, I would probably grab it up and we would dress up as that. But I think I would pick something else. I, I, I think the only way they got away with it, I mean, you got him and Burns and – and Seaver King, I mean, they're all ballers. That's the only reason. If they if they were the worst oh, guys yeah. on the team, I don't think it would have flew. All right. Yeah, they got, you, they got respect there. No doubt. Would you rather be lost in a jungle or trapped in a haunted house? Oh, lost in a jungle, man. You say lost that, but, jungle. man, you ever, you ever came across a tiger, bro? That's just a scary, I promise no. you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm messing with you. All right, last question, money question, been asked to everybody. Would you rather be the number one overall pick in the MLB draft, which comes with a $10 million sign-in bonus, or win a national championship next year? Mm. I'm going to go... I'm going to go win a national championship, man, because money ain't everything to me. Mm. It ain't to me, but I still like $10 million and be the number one overall pick. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Daniel, no doubt. Daniel where we where where do we stand on this now? Like, I feel like we're, we're conflicted. We used to say money. Now all these guests have convinced us about the memories and the camaraderie and everything that comes with winning a national championship. Where are we at on this? I don't care about all that. Give me that. Give me that money. Jacob, that's, you want to know, know, know? You want to know why Daniel can say that? Reach up there, Daniel. He ain't never seen it. He got one. How, how much? How much can I buy it for right now? A hundred k. A hundred k gets you, gets you crispy <laughs> and sparkly. There you, there you go. So Jacob, what you do is you you get your ten mil and then you go buy Daniel's for a hundred k and just flex that thing to people who don't know any better. I feel yeah. like that is like an absurd amount of money. Like for for that, and I get memories and all that, but it's just like I don't know, man. Hundred K could do. Well, like I said, I have trouble now that Skeens came on here and looked us in the face and said that he would give back all his money and the number one pick for the memories in the national championship. And so when I have a guy who was the first pick and got ten million dollars, and he said give him the memories and championship, it's hard for me to argue that. Yeah. Because he was still, he would still end to. up being the number one overall. Pick. <laughs> yeah, I hear, I hear, I hear he's pretty good. He's he's pretty good. All right, he couldn't he couldn't get it by Jacob, but that's all right. Nope, not nah. a chance. <laughs> I, I give him a run for his money, that's for sure. But man, he uh, yeah, he's good, man. Jacob I said he, that with my own he, eyes. Jacob ain't gonna go up there and, and be scared. He ain't gonna just give it to him. He's gonna have no. to earn that out. So no, he uh, he walked. Let me say something about those schemes, man. He he walked in our park in South Carolina. Everybody knew who he was. He he got on that mound, and uh, we had some dudes turn him around, and we were like, "All right, let's go." The the, the thing I'll say, rolling. the positive thing I'll say for him is he didn't get shook, and he continued. Um, you know, before everything had happened, he continued to push through it. He he didn't seem bothered at all. But yeah, um, a couple of the guys got a hold of him, obviously Petri, but you know, LSU fans, Daniel I'll tell you, I had to fight my own people that weekend. As you see me doing these battles on Twitter, they were like, South Carolina got lucky that there wasn't a third game. And I'm like, no, LSU got lucky. We hadn't at the time our pitching staff was in shambles. We had no one to throw at you guys. We got a steal mm -hmm. in game two. As an LSU fan, I just wanted to get the hell out of Columbia. I, everybody talking about they got lucky game three. Now, I told Daniel, man, we would have absolutely lost that series. And LSU fans who think otherwise, psh, we're lying to themselves. Well, I mean, y'all, you're, you're still figuring out your day three. And your bullpen was not good at that time. Mm. Meanwhile, good. South Carolina was the hottest team in the nation at the time. Yeah. Yeah. They saw, I mean, they saw injuries, a wounded animal. Yeah, I was going to say, sure. inj injuries is is ultimately – it's definitely a what could have been. Obviously, South Carolina loses in um, the Supers to Florida, but if that team's fully healthy and doesn't have to deal with everything they dealt with towards the back end of the season, the team very well could have been an Omaha. There's no doubt. No doubt. All right, Jacob, man, that's, that's the show, dude. Before you bounce, anything you want to plug or promote? Uh man, I just gotta say this, man. 
Um, all glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, man. He got me to the point where I am today. And, man, I, um, I couldn't do this life without him. So that's just what I got to say on that. There you go. All glory to God. And I'll, I'll help you out a little bit, too. Um, you want to know what Jacob's up to on Tuesday. Maybe it's Taco Tuesday. Or maybe it's Wednesday and he's re recording a podcast. Going over to IG at jcompton underscore 10. Or if you want to know what the Memphis Tigers baseball team is up to, going over to IG at Memphis Baseball, you'll get updates, you'll get rotations for the weekend, you'll get scores, highlights, you name it, you'll see it. Check it out. And February 16th, 17th, 18th, you guys are traveling to Alabama to take on Jacksonville oh, yeah. State. So, um, you guys are excited. I know you're ready to get things going. I know you're tired of, of practicing, you know, at at the crib, and you're ready to get out there and start doing some stuff. So at least, at least their crib is a new field. It looks. I'm beautiful, telling Daniel. you, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. So, Jacob, we wish you the best. Have a fun season, a healthy season, and and hopefully we can get you back on at the end, and we'll talk about it. Yes, sir. Well, that sounds good. I appreciate y'all guys so much. Thank you for y'all's time. Absolutely. That's Jacob Compton, everybody. If you like hearing Jacob's story or you just like hearing us average Joes talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook. Retweet us on Twitter. Listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. As always, comments, ratings, feedback, thumbs up, hearts, hugs, loves. We'll take it all. And we'll see everybody. We got tomorrow night, pros and Joes, right, Jim? Yup. We got Andrew Pinckney and Elijah Nunez with me and old Mike. All right, Mikey and Jim, pros and Joes. But next week, Jim, it's very, it's a big, big episode. Do you know why? First time we're heading to the upper Northwest. That's right. We're going to be talking to Aiden Jimenez. And for those of you that don't know Aiden Jimenez, because you're not staying up late to watch West Coast baseball, let me tell you about him. Oregon State baseball, one of the top teams in the country. He's a guy. He's a guy you need to know. So we're going to get his story. We're going to talk to him. It's going to have, have a really, uh, a new piece uh, or opening up new territory and doing Oregon variety. state and Oregon in the next couple of weeks is mean, wild. It's, it's going to be wild, man. So you know, when we say we're, we're all over the place in off the bench, it's all over the place, man. So this has been the in off the bench podcast. As always, remember strong body, sharp minds, grit and grind all the time. We are out.